We're joined by documentary photographer Dan Milner as he discusses one of his photos, which was a challenge for him to get close up. Then he and Mark Silber critique photos from the community. What's okay, the story so, behind this? Uh, when you asked me to send a bunch of images that were that were sort of challenging to make, I sent I sent three. Okay. Um, this is the one that sort of popped out in my head when I sent it, and I sent it specifically uh, in magazine form because I just want to remind everybody. And your sponsor today, obviously Bay Photo, and obviously I work for Blur. Yeah. Um, I print everything. And so this is a magazine that's 240 pages of work from about a 10 year span covering every story I ever did in that time frame. But this is an image I made. I started covering the political conventions in America back in 1992 in Houston. I did San Diego in 96 and I did LA in 2000. And these were remarkable events to photograph. Um, they were violent. They were interesting. They were a challenge in every way because you just had to be ready for anything. Houston was incredibly violent. It was the first time I was working for I was working for the Associated Press. I was I was stringing for them, meaning I was freelancing. They gave me a press credential. I got kicked and punched and clubbed and and run over on horseback by the Houston Police Department. And I was it really opened my eyes about what it was like to be a photojournalist. San Diego was very very calm and peaceful. And this photograph was from Los Angeles in 2000, and this was a whole different ballgame. Um, I got um, clubbed and kicked and gassed and punched and almost shot in the head with a rubber bullet. And you'll love this wow. because it sounds like it's right out of a movie. I was behind a barricade, a concrete barricade, in what was called the designated protest area. And there's always a designated protest area. And it's a place where the authorities have lined it out and mapped it out and said, OK, if you're here at the if you're here at the convention to protest, this is the legal place that you can protest. And inevitably, whether it was San Diego or Houston or L.A., that goes really well for a couple of days. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, they decide it's no longer a legal protest area and they come in in force. So I'm in the protest area. You're hemmed in on three sides by chain link and razor wire. So there's nowhere to go. And in front of me are lines of LAPD and riot, riot gear. And everything's fine. Everybody's protesting, doing their thing. And I am loading my Leica, one of them. Yeah. And I'm behind this concrete barrier. And I dropped my roll of film. <laughs> so I bend down to pick up this film. And I hear screaming. And I pop my head up above the barricade, just my eyes like this. And I see the riot police coming. And they have these you know, rubber bullet guns. And they're just firing into the protest area. And the, there's an older photographer from behind me from Miami, and he gets hit right in the side of the head and goes down. And it's just chaos. And now it's it's about making pictures, but it's also about trying to get out of that protest area without getting, you know, beat up, arrested, whatever. So when you're working in and around law enforcement, it can be really tricky. And this is shot with a 35 downtown as the police went through and cleared out streets. And these are workers from somewhere behind this mesh parking garage uh, structure this steel gate that came down and I love it because of the layering, yeah. you know, you've got foreground, mid ground, background. It's a to me, a very dramatic photo and speaks a lot about these conventions where, um, as soon as they happen, there's unrest on the streets and you've got to be able to get in and get out because a lot of these people do not, these police do not want to be photographed. You know, Dan, you've got to get close. Yeah. Sorry. We have a member of our AYP group, Nemi, who is 15 years old, and she's been showing her images of getting right into these same situations. I mean, it's unbelievable. She's 15 years old, and I hope she pops in here so you can talk to Dan. Yeah, she, she is here, and we have one of her images, so we'll definitely okay. be oh, covering cool. that. All right, let's 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 get past mine and get on to other people's. So that was the um, that was the the story behind that image, and I did not get punched or clubbed during this image, but I got. Punched in club, making some others. And it's and, a challenge, um, man. Yeah. That's, okay. I don't miss those days. So Nemi just chimed in, and she said that her story, that your story you just told reminded her of the May 1st demonstrations in Paris that she and her dad went to. And this is her image uh, from this. Again, Dan, uh, she's 15, and she's shooting it with a 35-millimeter lens. So she's right in there. She yeah, um, that's good. I mean, and, and here's the thing. A 15-year-old female in some ways will have advantages in a scene like this because I would call her an anomaly, right? Most of the, the people that are out here covering this press, it's a, it's a weird situation. Now, on, what's interesting to me is not the person in the foreground, which is, he's, he's fine. I love the fact that his goggles are up and his eyes are sharp and that sort of gives you this human relationship to him. 
He's also got basically a straight up military weapon, which is always interesting to think about sort of the militarization of the police forces around the world. Yeah. But it looks to me that the person to the far left is a female officer. Uh -huh. And and it's interesting to me. So, I mean, look, anybody who has the guts to go out and cover this stuff, it's definitely um, it's definitely, you know, worth doing. It's history unfolding. And by the way, you know, Paris is you go back to the 60s and look at the rioting in Paris and some of the work that was done by Magnum. Um, you know, this is a this is the latest version of that. So kudos to her for, for um, you know, going out and having the guts to do this. It's a nice brain. Yeah, it's it's. Um, yeah, agreed. This one is from Joe and it's sheriff uh, captain comforts a young victim at the scene of a fatal motor vehicle crash. Wow. Yeah. So this is. Um, the pictures like this get a pass in a lot of ways, right? So number one, you're working in not the most optimal lighting conditions, right? You're what looks like midday. There's nothing you can do about that. This is a this is an image based on content, and the content is really solid. You've got this traumatized kid, and you've got a cop who's trying to do the right thing, sheriff's department it looks like, trying to do the right thing and comforting this kid. The thing that you don't, when you see an image like this, often what gets overlooked is how you have to navigate a scene like that. Because if you step, make one step in the wrong place, or go too close, or or in, you know in, uh, hinder one of these uh, first responders, you're in big trouble. Yeah. And so um, this is, you know, he's got a long lens. He's cleaned up as much as he can. Um, I would also maybe just like the last photo. I'm not sure that object in the foreground. Oh, yeah. Um, adds much, so maybe a tiny bit tighter on the crop. But other than that, it's a it's a good good photograph. It reminds me of a picture I made in Phoenix years ago of a situation very similar to this. So I mean, good job getting in and navigating and recording this. Uh, a very tough situation. Yeah, the edges of the frame in this case in the foreground it does it does pop your eye off of them where you want it to go. So you could also cheat in Photoshop or Lightroom and remove that. It's a, no, uh, Mark Silver. I'm going to slap your hand. He's not going to let me Just get away it. with it. Don't remove it. What are you going to do next? Put a unicorn in the background? Absolutely. <laughs> got to watch you now. Right. Now I know I've I got to watch you like a hawk. I've been schooled by Dan Milner in public. <laughs> I would never do that, of course. I'm just saying of one could not. do that. But you're right. You, I think a simple crop, and it's it's actually sitting there ready to be ready to be yeah, removed. It's easy. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a simple crop and I think it would clean it up just a teeny bit. Yeah. Uh so Peter, he took this during a Black Lives Matter protest in Brussels. Yeah, um look, the, I've seen a lot of these protest photos as, as of late, obviously. Um it's interesting to see that it's happening globally. Um obviously there's there's reform that needs to happen globally in this regard. I think with this particular image, I would take well, and in, and you may not be able to without getting, you know, manhandled, but taking two steps forward because the primary element in this image is the woman on the right and the officer on the left and the officer in the middle with his mouth open yelling. That is the drama of this scene. Yeah. So I would just simply crop the, the, the arm on the right hand side isn't really adding anything, but it's not. And if you crop, you're not going to lose anything over there. You're not going to lose anything off the top and you're not going to lose anything on the left. So I would just make a tighter version of it, and I think it's very solid. Why don't you do that and put it back on uh, the AYP club so we can see it? Same for you other guys. I think it would be really interesting to see your befores and afters on that. We love seeing yeah. it. Like, it's one of my favorite parts of seeing people you know, trying out some of the changes. Robert Kappa right. said, you know, if your photos aren't good enough, you're not close enough, right? You're so not close enough. That's right. It takes it takes courage to take that one or two more steps, as you said, because all you got to do is is elicit their their anger, and you're now the target. We hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like and leave a comment. We love to hear from you. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can know when all of our future videos come out. And finally, be sure to get out there and capture your own images of life.